We're out here cruising. We're Very bobbing. slow. We're not cruising, we're bobbing. Yeah, speaking and bobbing. Speaking and bobbing. Sun's out. Guns out. <laughs> not kidding, I'm kidding. We don't, <laughs> no, we don't do that. But we're out here, there's not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of wind going on, as I'm sure you can see. It's about a half knot of wind, maybe one knot, best case scenario. Mm -hmm. Pretty glassy, mm -hmm. but there's a pretty cool uh, shipping container put it down there. Pretty big. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on today? Um, but it's been fun. It's, I feel like it's a little sneak peek. Yeah, That's what the summer has to offer us. Yeah, I agree. Because it's what? What's the temperature out today? 60 something? Yeah, I think so. And I, feel, I think it feels extra hot too because there's no wind, you know? Right. So. Right, because when there is a slight breeze, it gets a little chilly. Yeah, when we, when we first took it out, we were motoring. It was a little chilly, yeah. but. I'm good. So, got a couple little upgrades. We got the Life Sling 2. That was a new one. Safety's paramount. So, safety first. got that. Yeah, safety first. We got it tied down to that um, little piece on the stainless steel there. Still haven't hooked up my little 20 watt panel yet, but eventually we'll get there. I also put up the wooden dowel for the Wi Fi client. So, you can see that. I think I'm going to um, stain it or varnish it or something um, at some point. We also got some fender covers. So, those look pretty sweet. The fenders were really taking off a lot of the, um, the they were covered in like white powder from the gel coat. So, this will probably help. And um, they were almost as expensive as the fenders themselves. <laughs> Fenders were 80 bucks, I think, and then the, the covers were like 45 or 50 or something, I think. So protection is key. Protection. Protection is very important. It's so quiet out here. Turn the music back on. Turn the music back on. Yeah. All right, I gotta Enough cut, I gotta, I gotta Enough cut the this. video. Enough of this. No. All right. See ya. Peace. Hey, how's it going everyone? Just got back from work a little bit early. Today is Thursday, March 25th, and I wanted to give you a quick update on a couple of projects I kind of have going on in the background. Some of them I can't um, show right now because the, the parts haven't come in. Um, but number one is one of my big priorities before the summer hits, which obviously is coming up, it's March, um, is to get a good set of um, anchor chain. So I actually went ahead and ordered some um, ACO, A-C-C-O, I don't know how you pronounce that, G4, which is grade 43, I think. Um, and it's 5 16 chain, um, which is well within spec for a boat this size and weight. So I ordered about 170 feet of it from Defender.com. Um, unfortunately, because of the weight of that much chain, it has to be shipped via freight. But the good news is, is that it's actually coming in on Monday. So I have that coming in. I want to put in a windlass. This boat does not have a windlass, believe it or not. But unfortunately, I believe that this model, when you purchased the windlass upgrade, which was a factory option, when you purchase that upgrade, it also included a uh, interior fiberglass enclosure for the anchor chain all the way up in the V-berth, directly under the V-berth and kind of behind that piece of wood. Now, I've taken all of that out. Uh, didn't want to show it on video because I wasn't sure what was behind it before I opened it up. That little fiberglass enclosure for the anchor chain is not there. So I'm gonna have to get creative if I want to install a windlass because there isn't a whole lot of room up there in kind of the anchor storage locker up on the bow. It wasn't really designed to um, house a lot of anchor chain for a windlass and with a windlass you generally need about a foot fall of chain so that the chain doesn't bunch up on itself so it needs a clear one foot area between a foot and 18 inches so that the chain does not bunch and there's really nowhere for me to achieve that level of fall without the chain hitting something so i might, might have to get creative on the windlass but the good news is the chain is coming uh it was on sale i think i got it for about three dollars a foot which is pretty darn good for um, 5 16th chain. Um, one of the other things that I've been working on, which I can show, is the bilge pump float switch. So the float switch was mounted in such a way that, I can see it right down there, it's a little dark, 
but that float switch there is actually mounted almost at the same level as the intake on the bilge pump. So what happens is as I fill the bilge up a couple times to clean it, is that this bilge pump will continuously run because the float switch is so low that it still thinks that there's, well, still knows that there's water down there at its level. So the float switch is up, which lets the pump run, even though the pump isn't sucking out any more water. So another potential bad side effect is, of that is the bilge pump can get airlocked, which is really, really bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I've actually pulled up, this is, I guess like a bilge kind of holder for all your bilge goodies. <laughs> um, I pulled this up and what I'm gonna do is take that float switch and actually raise it up probably just like an inch or so. And I have a couple of pieces of scrap wood that are about the same size as, same thickness as this piece of wood. So I'm gonna get that raised up so that this will no longer continuously run when there's only a tiny bit of water left in there and I don't run the risk of air locking it. I also have something else that I can show is a uh, float switch slash alarm. So this is a sounder alarm that, uh, and a light that will alarm when a water level reaches a certain threshold. So some people have these in line with their bilge pumps, um, which means that the second the bilge pump turns on, the alarm goes off. In my case, I think I'm going to mount uh, the float switch, you know, totally separate float switch. And I think I'm going to mount it a little bit higher than the bilge pump. So that um, when this goes off, for instance, if I had it mounted here, when that alarm goes off, that means something's really not good because the bilge pump is either not on or it's not keeping up with the inflow of water. So I really want the alarm to kind of only sound when the situation's dire. I might wire in an additional alarm that I could potentially silence um, into the main float switch and the main, main bilge pump. I also bought a secondary bilge pump. I know, uh, you know I'm an engineer, a lot of you are probably engineers too, or at least boat fanatics. It's always good to have an extra level of safety slash comfort when it comes to keeping your boat uh, dry and the water on the outside. Another random topic, um, we recently switched out the hot water heater, or technically the water heater since you hot water is already heated. Uh, we switched out the water heater with a brand new six gallon whale, formerly Seaward. And we used the model that includes the heat exchanger, which takes the heat from the engine coolant while you're under motor and basically heats up the water so that you have running hot water while you're underway with the motor on. We are currently using ethylene glycol coolant solution. It's the Prestone Dex Cool. And I looked through the user manual on my Yanmar, my specific motor model, which is the 3JH2E. Within that manual, there's no specific requirements for coolant. They also mention that you can use distilled water if you're in a climate that does not get below freezing. Our worry with using ethylene glycol coolant solution is that uh, you may or may not be aware it's extremely toxic. So if uh, I think the lethal dose of it is if a um, about someone a little bit taller than me, a little bit larger than me, were to drink about 100 milliliters of it, which isn't really that much if you fill up like a um, little soda bottle, that's about this much, that's lethal. And if it's 50-50 diluted, then you just multiply it by two, 200 milliliters, that's lethal. Now, even if you don't get the lethal dose, it really wreaks havoc on your kidneys and it's super, super toxic. And because our engine coolant system runs through our water heater and heats up the water, even though in theory, the water pressure system is at a high, operating at a higher PSI than the engine coolant system, therefore, if there were to be a leak in that heat exchanger in the water tank, hot water would force its way into the heat exchanger, into the coolant loop, and we probably wouldn't get the ethylene glycol um, in our water supply. Now, if the water pressure is turned off and there were a crack in the heat exchanger, then potentially you end up with super toxic ethylene glycol in your water supply. Now, that kind of freaks me out. There aren't a lot of discussions about it in kind of the boating community, at least online. And the fact that in my opinion, you're essentially have relatively high toxicity poison 
in your water supply <laughs> at all times, your hot water supply, kind of freaks me out and it freaks Sydney out too. So what we have decided to do is rather than replace that ethylene um, glycol solution with just distilled water, since we live in Annapolis and it gets uh, below freezing, we purchased, if I come up here, we purchased some West Marine propylene glycol antifreeze. So if you look on the back, it says non-toxic, et cetera, et cetera. You know, non-toxic propylene glycol formula is safer than ethylene glycol based antifreeze, et cetera. Gives you a little chart on the different mixing ratios and all of that. Now, there are a lot of discussions online as to, oh, well, you know, ethylene glycol is heavier duty. It's better designed for diesel engines. And I agree with that. I think that it's true. I don't think we're going to be running the engine at such high levels that really require an ethylene glycol solution. I know ethylene glycol will last a lot longer. Generally, it's rated for, I don't know, seven years, 750,000 miles in a, in a vehicle. Um, with propylene glycol, might need to change it out more frequently, but this is rated heavy duty. It is considered heavy duty by West Marine. Starbright also makes heavy duty um, propylene glycol. And for us, I much rather would potentially risk overheating the engine, in my opinion, than risk getting ethylene glycol water or ethylene glycol in our um, water. So some of you may disagree with me. I'm curious to hear all of your thoughts. There hasn't been a lot of discussion, like I said, on forums, on online topics. Um, but to me, I think it makes sense. Safety over engine longevity. <laughs> but that's just me. So uh, very curious to hear what you say. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually drain out the old, or not the old, but the uh, just recently put in ethylene glycol solution out of the coolant loop drain that out, dispose of it properly, run some fl uh, cold water through it, flush the system, and then I'm going to go ahead, mix the propylene glycol into the correct ratio for what we need, and then get this into the coolant system. I decided to tackle the bilge water alarm, and you can see that I now have the float switch mounted here on this wooden uh, lift up off of the lower flow switch down there and I now have the uh, leads connected into a marine grade 14 gauge wire which runs through here up through here and then comes out and you can see it spooled over there. Originally I was planning to take the power off of the bilge pump fuse but when I thought about that a little bit further I realized that if the bilge pump for instance, gets stuck or for whatever reason shorts out and blows this fuse in the process, what's gonna happen then is my alarm is no longer gonna sound. So what I've decided to do is run it straight to the battery for its 12 volt source because I wanna make sure that it has the power direct and doesn't have to pass through this same bilge pump fuse. Now with that being said, I am gonna still fuse it, but it's gonna have its own dedicated fuse and a waterproof housing. From there, the power is going to run down to the switch. If that switch closes, closes the circuit, it then runs up and I'm going to have the alarm probably mounted here once I get a right size hole saw. So there's a uh, massive herring outside. Let me see if I can get them on video. That was pretty cool. He was out here earlier. He was sitting on one of the pilings uh, right near the boat, just hanging out. And um, huge, huge herring. And um, 
I was just about to go out and fill up the water tank and I saw him over there and it looked like he was um, um, hunting for some fish so he must have been able to uh, get one between when I saw him originally and when I got the camera out so pretty cool.